so, dear colleagues, uh, uh, it's uh, really nice to be here. Thank you for the, this opportunity. And um, as I said, I, uh, I work uh, in uh, Estonian University of Life Sciences as a lecturer and uh, as a postdoctoral researcher. And um, maybe also uh, I'll say uh, a few words about uh, my background. Uh, uh, then you will maybe better understand uh, the choices I, I have made and uh, the example I will be uh, showing you. So my background is uh, basically connected to different kinds of concepts that uh, include stakeholder engagement, uh, stakeholder participation, and uh, the application fields are then uh, connected to nature conservation, ecological networks, and uh, spatial planning. So this is basically my, uh, uh, my background. And uh, I should also say that uh, I am not a systematic reviewer. Um, I have mostly experience in uh, uh, qualitative uh, primary research, so doing interviews uh, and uh, textual analysis. Uh, but why I'm, I am here is that uh, uh, Biljana asked me to uh, briefly introduce uh, what is uh, uh, framework synthesis and uh, to give a brief example of that. So uh, I'll try to give that example and uh, uh, in the bearing in mind that um, uh, to highlight some of the questions that a uh, novice uh, researcher might uh, encounter when he or she is doing uh, such a work. So maybe briefly about uh, if we depict uh, uh, synthesis different kinds of methods on a epistemological continuum, then we can see that uh, the framework synthesis uh, lies in the more realist uh, type of methods. And uh, it means that uh, you are less in interpretive, but uh, you more summarize or aggregate the results. So, uh, so what it is, it's uh, practically uh, comes from the term comes from uh, primary research. It com comes from uh, framework analysis, and it's practically a way or technique to uh, to criticize or to rebuild an existing framework. Or you can also choose a new one or build a new one if you uh, find it uh, if you don't find an appropriate one. And uh, because it's quite uh, structured. Uh, and it, it's also said that it's uh, quite uh, less uh, time consuming compared to the other uh, qualitative synthesis methods, then it's also quite uh, popular for uh, policy advice uh, because it's uh, supposed to provide you quite, uh, uh, quite precise uh, answers to, to the questions. And what are then the basic uh, steps or uh, phases in the synthesis? So, uh, everything starts from a question. Uh, so where do you get this question? It's uh, usually the background uh, literature that you consult, uh, but also you can consult the stakeholders, policymakers. Uh, and then uh, in parallel, you can uh, build your framework or select uh, an existing one. Um, and then you, you search for the literature, you include um, the, the studies and then data extraction. And once you reach to the results, then you, you, you will hopefully get uh, uh, like a new frame or refined frame, uh, which, uh, uh, which you can then uh, use to criticize the existing uh, framework and also the broader background literature. And also provide if, you, if your question is like more precise, then you can also provide some policy advice or some practical advice. So maybe now about the example. Uh, it's about the recent uh, review that uh, I have been coordinating and doing um, as part of my postdoctoral studies here in Stockholm Resilience Center a couple of years ago. But this was quite recently published and uh, and so I will talk about this. Um, uh, I should also mention that uh, it's um, it's not like a broad, um, uh, how to say, project. So it's basically my postdoctoral project. And I had uh, uh, good co-authors, but it's uh, 
it's not like a big uh, research project in this sense. So about the topic, it's, uh, it's, it focuses on uh, learning in uh, natural resource management. And uh, why did we choose uh, such a topic? Uh, it's uh, basically the reason that uh, uh, in natural resource management, uh, the uh, learning concept is, uh, has been taken up quite uh, uh, popularity. And uh, uh, it's uh, said that uh, you can have a, lo a lot of uh, like positive outcomes from, the, from this concept um, into the practice. So uh, you can have uh, practical uh, management, uh, better decisions. You can uh, have changes in the institutions. You can have the like, ultimate uh, better environmental effects and so on. So, so we were interested in uh, what does the literature say about it? Uh, what is there? And uh, then maybe about the challenges that I or questions I uh, I encountered. So, so this was an interesting journey actually <laughs> for me because uh, it was uh, it was the first time I was doing this. Um, I mean in the uh, synthesis level, uh, not working with the primary data, primary qualitative data. And I had a lot of questions in my head when I started this uh, work. And uh, the first uh, set of challenges was then uh, how to build or select a framework. So um, in the literature, is, uh, in the methodological literature, it's usually said that you should uh, uh, select like an existing uh, framework. Uh, but uh, what if uh, you don't find uh, an, like a suitable one uh, that would uh, suit for your research question and for your data? So, and which disciplines you include, because uh, learning is uh, like a very broad uh, concept that uh, you can find from the learning, uh, from the uh, educational literature to the organizational studies to the natural resource management where it has been uh, traveled. So, and which concept do you use? Do you use um, uh, like a learning based concept, of course, and also which kind of uh, natural resource related concepts do you use? Then, so we chose to build uh, a new framework. It's not totally new, of course, but uh, it's like uh, suited for our purpose. So what you can see here is the, the first uh, upper um, corner um, on the left hand side is the more like, uh, which has been more elaborated in the literature. So learning outcomes from the perspective of cognitive change, relational change, skills. Uh, but the, so, so to speak, new ones is, uh, you can see in the uh, right hand side, uh, are the ones that uh, how these outcomes translate to the actual uh, practice of natural research or environmental management. So this is our preconceived uh, uh, set of topics or uh, frame. Then uh, what, uh, what about if you have the framework more or less and then you start uh, searching the literature and including the studies? Uh, it's not a linear process by no means. So um, you can have a lot of uh, confusion in your head. But uh, for example, uh, what are the what is the appropriate uh, search strategy as an overall uh, strategy? So, um, and also what are the keywords or suitable search strings? Um, and what uh, if you if you have uh, search for the literature and if you have the pile of the studies, uh, then what? Uh, how to include or exclude them? What are the suitable criteria for that? And here. Um, actually, I think here it was the phase where I struggled or uh, we struggled the more, <laughs> the most, uh, because there are very few uh, like uh, really detailed examples from the natural resource management literature. There are examples, of course, from the other domains, from health domain, from uh, other domains, so but uh, not so specific from the environmental domain. And uh, even when there are like examples from keywords that have been used. There are not so many examples that uh, detail out the, the exact uh, approach. For example, like 
search string level. What are the exact search strings that have been used? So it's very um, difficult to um, to comprehend and to, to invent like a good strategy for a beginner. And uh, so we ended up with uh, this kind of uh, search um, model or search uh, depiction. And we went uh, from oh, like over 1000 records to uh, 50, about 50 papers, final papers included in the analysis. So we call this like a systematic literature search, but uh, like the analysis is more uh, qualitative than. Uh, and uh, what about then the final uh, phase, um, data analysis? What should uh, one do with the literature? So what was our, uh, what were our questions and uh, challenges in this sense? So maybe one one of the most uh, important ones was that uh, we needed to revise the categories in the initial framework quite a lot. So um, when doing the analysis, um, you find new topics. And uh, as Neil uh, also introduced in the beginning uh, about the thematic synthesis, that actually the framework synthesis goes hand in hand often with the framework uh, synthesis. So, so you, you find new themes and you find new uh, relevant uh, aspects that you uh, need to include. So you need to revise your framework, uh, but not too much also, <laughs> because it's uh, it's like a preconceived uh, set uh, still. So you need to find a balance. And it's uh, maybe in, in, uh, in some, it's uh, like a continuous balancing act between uh, generalizing your findings and also to um, how to take into account for the context uh, that is uh, in the individual studies. So it's not a quantitative counting of numbers, of course. And also, uh, at the practical level, it was uh, the language use that was very different uh, in different studies. So uh, they all came from the natural resource management, but which is very broad. So, for example, even the uh, learning uh, term itself, it's uh, uh, conceptualized or, or uh, dealt with uh, very differently in the literature. So, for example, it's uh, uh, in one set of literature, it can be a process and in other, another, another set of literature, it can be an outcome. So, and also the outcomes uh, that we uh, identified, it's uh, sometimes uh, considered as process and sometimes in outcome, as an outcome. So what was our approach there was that we tried to be as close as possible to the meaning what the original article said. So that was the um, strategy that we took. So here you can see the, uh, like the revised framework or the framework that uh, we filled in with the topics. And uh, this is like uh, to sum up, it's a kind of a way to uh, build like a conceptually ground and uh, em empirically grounded uh, uh, framework that you can use then for uh, uh, like uh, criticizing an existing fr framework or model or like uh, building um, more like um, practic uh, practically related uh, uh, topics in this uh, field. So, but of course, as I mentioned also, uh, for me it was uh, a challenge in this sense that uh, uh, it was like not a big research project, but uh, like a postdoctoral, uh, more or less, um, not individual study, but, uh, but still it was, uh, I, I, uh, I think that in the future the T uh, the team would be really important in this sense and also the time because uh, yeah I think it's uh, it takes time and, uh, and good uh, results don't come just like that so but many thanks and I hope that maybe it was something for fuse.